school board, everybody's present. Um, I see no additions to the agenda. Um, so, um, entertain a motion to adopt the agenda that we have. So moved. A motion by Cheryl. Second. Second by Kella. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Approving correct minutes from the December 2nd, 2014 regular meeting. I have a motion from Deb, second. a second from David. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're at financial reports. Uh, final audited 2014 treasures report. Saw that you had that in here, Bob. Yeah, there's there's one addition this time, and that at the end of the year we need to adjust our our, our treasury report, and, and that's in there right now. The, the the bottom amount is the same; that hasn't changed. We just had to adjust because of property tax shifts, some interest, and that kind of stuff. The state kind of dictates where we put things. So again, the bottom line as far as the total amount is actually is, is the same between the one that we did um, back in 10 one 14. And, and this one, so <coughs> just going to recommend that we approve. Okay, you expect we should approve that one separate because it's you can certainly you can certainly do that. Everybody. And then the other two together. Yeah. That, thoughts on that? That'd be fine. Okay, so do we have a motion to approve the final audit of the 2000 for June 2014 Treasury report? A motion by Lou. Second. Second by Deb. <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Then we've got the uh, November 2014 uh, treasurer's report and monthly balance sheet. Anybody see anything out of the ordinary? From David to approve the uh, treasures and the balance sheet. Second. Um, second by Cheryl. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Now we are audit and approval of bills, additional November 2014 bills and December uh, 2014 bills. And Mark, I'll send it your way. Okay. Um, I had the opportunity just before the meeting to go over the additional November bills and compare December bills as they are written, and I make a recommendation to approve them as they are. Okay. Exactly. Today. So we have a motion from Mark for approval. I'll second that motion. Second from Bruce. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Okay, we have um, one item on the consent agenda. Review and consider approval of the following non-athletic assignments for the 2014-15 school year. Yearbook advisor, Courtney Miller. Yeah, just to remind the board that this used to be a class. Um, it is now an after school activity. So what we've done is we've had to work with the MPA organization to come up with an amount in a place that we would put this individual on the extracurricular um, piece. We've come to an agreement on that. Uh, so it will be outside. They do this as just like their extracurricular extra um, academic piece for this. So that, that's what changes and that's why we're coming to the board at this point. I certainly recommend approval. Did you have very many people interested in the position? Uh, no. <laughs> so there, there were limited numbers that applied. Very, very limited. I have a motion uh, from Deb to approve um, the, um, the assignment of Courtney Miller to the yearbook advisor and a second by Kella. Any further discussion? Um, I, would, I would just mention to the board that just because we didn't have two applicants, we're very happy with the individual that we have. Okay, and that's a good point. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Okay, um, I think to keep rolling here, and the kids are not here, so they look like they were next on the agenda. Um, now we have another one, the number five in business. Um, 
we are going to hold that till um, done. Yes, right. we'll have to hold that as long as we can. So, until she gets off work and the students get here, spend a lot of time talking to the board, and then she'll get off and she'll be in for that. So, but you can do any of the other ones. So, so as, if it's agreeable with everybody, let's do two, three, and four at this point for business items. Okay. Okay. Uh, number two is review and consider approval of the final 2014 payable 2015 levy certification. If yeah, the board remembers, we did table this from last meeting just because we didn't have the exact amount uh, because of the bond sale, we could sell at a lower interest rate than we thought. Um, as I mentioned in in the addendum, um, we did save $7,971.99 because we received a lower interest rate. Um, what I do need is a motion to approve the levy certification for the 2014 payable fit 2000 or 2015 at two million seventy four thousand five hundred or eighty eight dollars and ninety six cents. So that's the motion. That is, I need. I want the exact and and The motion by Deb, um, and a second by Lou. Anybody from the public on that? Okay. Hearing nothing. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Okay, review and consider approval of resolution directing administration to look at a budget adjustments for the 2015-16 school year. You do have the resolution or packet. It's the same resolution that we've done virtually every year at this time. It just allows me to go in and take a look at our, our, our budget, make any recommendations to the board. Again, this is just me going in looking at it. The budget would have to come back to the board just like we've done in the past. Um, I would like to also set up a financial committee meeting to have some discussion once we get down a little bit further into January when I've got some recommendations for adjustments that we would need, need to make or that I would recommend that we make. So this is just kind of the first step in everything. It just gives me the power to do it. It is a resolution, so I would recommend a roll call vote on um, the Okay, I have a motion from Deb. Second. Second from Cheryl. Any comments from the public? Hearing none, um, I'm in the direction for the roll call. All right, Kella? Aye. Mark? Aye. Deb? Aye. Dave? Aye. Lou? Aye. Bruce? Aye. Aye. Cheryl? Aye. Okay, it's passed. Review and consider, number four, review and consider approval of resolution of school board uh, supporting team up grant application to Minnesota State High School League Foundation. Max, do you mind just coming down and just kind of reminding them? We, we did the same grant, um, I think, the last couple of years. But just to remind the board and the community on why we asked for this. Basically, we can't ask the State High School League for money without the resolution of the school board to do so. The State High School League offers grants that allow us to be able to um, get money to be able to do student activities, use this money for uh, leadership events, and put on events throughout the school for directly for students. But we can't do it without a resolution from the school board. Okay. So moved. Uh, we have a motion from Cheryl. Second. And a second from Mark. Any further discussion? Anything from the public? Thank you, Max. Nothing from the public? Um, Mark? Aye. Deb? Aye. Dave? Aye. Lou? Aye. Bruce? Aye. Cheryl? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we are there. We don't have kids yet, so does everybody mind if we move on to personnel? Are we okay with that, Lord? Okay. Um, number one, review and consider approval of maternity leave for Danelle Lucum nurse from approximately January 21st, 2015 through March 10th, 2015. I guess that's all pretty clear. So, <laughs> I would highly recommend approval. Uh, okay, we have a motion from Gala, a second from Lou. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Yes. Review and consider approval of temporarily adding 1.5 hours per student contact day to elementary food service effective January 2nd, 2015 through June 1st, 2015. 
Uh, we did bring this up to the board at the beginning, and I do still need to do bring. What I believe right now is that they need this time. Okay, they told me that I do want some flexibility. Last time we tied it into specific people, but this time I'm saying I just want the same amount of time that we paid at the beginning of the year for that, which is an hour and a half. I don't want to tie into any specific person because we want the flexibility to adjust it. We won't. We don't want to cause overtime or anything like that. So we'll certainly look at that. I do need to bring in somebody from the outside. I just want them to take a, a, a look at our our food service and just do a comparison on what we need to have and what we maybe could do without. And it may be, they could find, come, they might come in and say, boy, we're really short-handed and we should have more time. They may come in and say, no, you're bought at the right amount of time now, or they may give us a, a number of various opinions on that. I just have not gotten to that particular point yet because various things, no excuses, just haven't done it. So I'd like to continue this to the end of the year and I will not come back to the board with this one way or another. It'll either be permanent next time or it won't be there. Okay, I have a motion from Deb. Second. A second from Cheryl. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Okay, um, there's no kids waiting. Can we move on? Can you open everybody? Okay, David, could you um, come this direction for the elementary school principal report? We like you down by the way we're home. Someday they're going to have another camera, so then you'll be face on. Yeah, Dave has been asking for that, so. <laughs> <laughs> I usually spend the morning meeting making my notes, so it's a little quick today. Um, well, we're just finishing up our first round of practice MCA math, uh, third grade. Started today, we've already done fourth and fifth, and we have the results. We have um, started looking at some of the data already, and we'll continue to do that at our next in service. Looks pretty good. I mean, I, I in the past we've taken the test at uh, the end of October or in November, and then we take it again in February. This year we held off a little bit just to give our kids a little bit more time to. Uh, or and I have teachers to go over some of the skills, but looks really good. The test is all um, new with a different company, and so our teachers and, and myself are learning along with the students. Uh, Don Pinnell does a wonderful job of making sure we're up to date and trained and things like that. So, um, right now we have many students who are absent, um, not feeling well. High temperatures. Um, we have had some influenza uh, cases, and so I'll be working with Danielle. And we're gonna, my newsletter for January will go out on Friday. It's, it's hopefully things will get better over Christmas break. In fact, I think I just sent um, the principals uh, something from MDE saying that it's spiking right now for this in the state. So we'll, we'll just get word out there. We don't want students coming to school ill, and uh, it doesn't help anybody with that. So hopefully, when we come back in January, we can maybe get things sanitized a little throughout all the classrooms in the building and start fresh in January, hopefully. Uh, Parent-teacher conferences went well. We had, overall, we had about a 97% attendance rate. That's either that they came on their scheduled time. Sometimes we'll do a conference if there's an IEP meeting within a couple weeks of, of conferences. And uh, some teachers will do it over the phone or other arrangements. So 97% is typically about where we're at. So no changes there. Uh, technology, we have been meeting as a building technology team. We're putting together uh, some needs, uh, trying to look into the future a little bit um, for next year and the year after. And so we have a technology meeting on Thursday and we will present a, um, a list of items that we're looking for in the direction that we want to go. Any questions for me now? Thank you very much. Timing is perfect. Your timing is perfect. <laughs> And then you guys can take turns telling about 
your experience. And if you could use the, the mic and just Can it pass it? as a reminder, we are taping this and you get to watch yourselves uh, on TV <laughs> next, next few weeks, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, right now it's the week. Okay. Some of them are on both. Okay. So we are the students that went to We Day, which include the TLC members and the SAD reps. Um, I am the senior SAD representative and the part of TLC. Um, so we are going to start with Hallie and go down the line. So maybe you can introduce yourself and then maybe it's say it. something that you brought back from the We. Day yeah, it might be nice to get uh, the community and the board just a little bit, I know we talked about it once here, but a little bit more of an explanation on what the WE piece is all about. And how about you do that? <laughs> um, I'm Holly Johnson, and I'm part of the TLC and the SAD reps. Um, I thought WE Day was really fun because we kind of learned more about what we can do to help our society and our generation grow into better, positive people. And um, it was really inspiring just to see that our generation can make a difference in the world. Okay, we Day was this ginormous convention that we went to at the XL Energy Center on in November, like November 12th. And we went there, and so we learned about empowering our generation and stuff. And they talked about the definition of powerful is um, the ability to impact the life of another person. And so that just means like, like I have power, or like I'm being powerful right now because I'm talking to you and I'm impacting your life. So you don't have to be like a big person like I don't know, like some of the people that were there, like Magic Johnson or Mark Dayton and all those like big name people. Like you don't have to be a big name person to be powerful. Like as long as you're impacting someone else's life, you have power. So that's cool. I thought. All right. One thing I took from it was um, there's a lot of people there from third world countries, and it just made me realize how um, thankful I am for what I have, and I know that I take what I have for granted a lot. But just that um, I'm a lot better off than a lot of other people out there. So just to be thankful for what you have. Um, so when we went to Weeday, they had different like periods. So it was treated kind of as a school day. And each different period was about a different type of empowerment, like social empowerment or technological or educational different types of empowerment. And it was really cool to hear that from these famous people because when you see them on TV and stuff, you don't really look at them as like the same type of person as you, but when you see that they have these same values and <coughs> that we do, and um, they have struggles too, and they have overcome that and helped us to see that it um, was cool to hear that from those people. Um, I learned that it doesn't really matter who you are. I mean, you we were all just equal, and that's kind of like what Sam said, that it doesn't matter if you have a famous name or all equal and what you do can affect something, someone in a positive way or a negative way and one of the positive One of the things that I took out of the day was just because you have a good life doesn't mean you don't have the ability to change another person's life. You might be privileged but there's other people in third world countries that are starving and not having a mom or a dad no shelter, that doesn't mean you can't donate a goat or donate other stuff to help them live a better life. Can we skip over? I'm still trying to figure out. Okay, with what Easton said, um, I thought there was a lot of cool fundraising ideas, like these bracelets right here called the Tiki's, which means friend in Africa. There were ten dollars, five dollars went to outnumber hunger, and then the other five dollars went to the women in Africa that made it. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then like fifty dollars to buy a goat, and that produces sixteen glasses of milk each day, and that can like save lives in Africa. So I thought that was kind of cool. And those students that are just joining us, um, that were part of the Weekday group, 
if you can introduce yourself and talk about something that you brought back from the meeting, either the experience you had there or something that maybe you've used since you've come back. Does that help? I'm Colin Riley. Uh, I really enjoyed um, like uh, the, the stories that these amazing people had to share. Um, for one thing I remember the most was RJ. He was a uh, he'd been in the army and had uh, gotten in an explosion and his face was all mangled. He was just the happiest guy around, just making every day the best day ever because he was still with us. And that kind of helped put into perspective that you can still live through something and continue to make a better life for everybody. I'm Kayla Schaefer, and I really enjoyed um, listening to the speakers as well. Um, what I, a big thing that I got out of it was that we all might have difficulties in our lives, but to be able to go and maybe share your part, story or something to be able to read what you've learned and take positive out of maybe a bad situation and pass it on to someone else so that they can use that. And just to, you know, we've all learned something and to carry that on and pass it on to each other is what I thought I got really out of it. I'm Josh Masoini and um, my favorite speaker, uh, his name isn't really coming to mind right now, but he was he was a guy who um, he was born with some kind of spinal issue, was it? He had to get his entire lower half amputated, and so he didn't have any, he didn't have legs. I think they cut him right under the belly button, I think is what he was, but you know, he was walking around and he was so happy, you know, he was up on stage, he was grinning ear to ear, he just, he seemed like a really cool guy, and um, the part that, I don't know how many people actually know this, but after the blackout, he would actually get off his chair and walk himself to his to his wheelchair. And I just thought that was pretty cool because even though he's he's um, <coughs> handicapped, he, uh, he he's still independent and he doesn't really try to make it anyone else's issue. He makes, he makes the best of it and actually inspires people instead. So I just thought that was a really positive influence on a lot of people's situations. I'm still happy there, and one thing that I really like is when you're one person and you're trying to stand up for what you believe is right, you might get really discouraged and feel like you should give up because you think you're only one person, so you think like it's not going to change anything. But if you do give up, then you're for sure not going to change anything. But if you keep going, you might be able to like, start a chain reaction. All right, so I'm Taylor Berg, and I'm a PLC leader, and I'm also a SAD rep. I'm kind of going to recap Weed Day, and then I'll share my favorites or whatever. Well, like, in all Weed Day was, we had singers, we had a couple people sing, we had, um, a ton of speakers like on their life lessons and then, like how they grew from and how it helped them and then we had um, lessons like it was pretty much they went through and the setup of it was like as school so it was like first period and it was like saving the world and it was like second period how to be powerful and it was so it was set up as in periods of like how we can all make a difference and how we can impact each other and how Tatum was saying that like we're all powerful and one person we can stand up and like we're all empowering you guys, we're all, every day we have a choice to empower somebody. We don't have to be the government, like, huge thing. We don't need to be the principal. We don't need to be the top of anything. We can do it just by being who we are, kind of thing, to empower. Um, so that's kind of what the general, what we day was. I think it affected us all in a superb way. It was, like, just life-changing, seeing the kids in Africa without food, and they're making bracelets to make money, and they're, try to do things on their own, to do their own way of being who they want to be and to make a living for themselves. Um, so that was one of my favorite parts is that like we just here can help them save their kids and they have horrible diseases over there that we have fears for and like there's so many different ways that we personally can help them out. So that was my favorite is seeing how we are able as just simple, we're high schoolers and we're able to change the life of an African child or an African mom. So that was my favorite part of being able to see that. 
speakers, performances, all that. It was like being a voice. A voice to those that that, that can't have, that are afraid to speak out for them. And so, in a way, the speakers, the war veteran, and these most performances, in a way, they were speaking being, being from the heart, really. And I kept, I really believed in that. Because, in a way, it's kind of like when I, I speak from the heart. In a way, I speak my mind, and, and, and that's just how, I, how we day felt like in my in my eyes. That we can't can't be afraid of what's going to happen to us. That's what you do. Doing your life is what you're going to do. And people may have a disagreement with that, but that's their point of view. If you have a dream, you should follow it. That's what I think we day was about. Following your dreams. Did the board have any other questions or comments from our we group that was chosen? It was a big honor for our students here at Painesville to be chosen uh, to be able to participate in the We Day program. Um, it just shows how powerful their local project was, which is our TLC program. 
similar to your region of the um, sorry, you didn't get them, but that this happens every year, this yeah. how how many years has it been going on? This, I think this is only like the second year. I think this is the second year. Second year. Um, and we did apply for it last year and we weren't elected to to be able to participate, but this we had more things that we could add. Um, through our TLC program, which you guys have seen it grow over the years. Um, so the TLC program is what is our bought your way to this. So the better that program goes, the more it goes. Yeah, and you have to apply each year. So. I take it, you would, I haven't seen anyone go, oh, it was okay. But, so I would assume that all of you feel the same way he does, that this is something you would want to do every year. Yes. yes. Our goal is to get, um, the people that aren't in these groups to go to, so that whole school or full grades can go and not just the members. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it sounds amazing. It's exactly. cool to be here watching you guys' face. Mm -hmm. You can tell when kids, I have kids, you can tell with kids, you know when they're really just telling you what you want to hear. <laughs> but I haven't seen that on any of you all. You have that same, wow, look on your face. That's cool. Very nice job, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. And if you can go ahead and head back to class, uh, and if you're in the high school physical advisory, why don't you move down? So I'm going to let you MC our program today. Uh, this is our principal advisory. We, uh, um, we did get together and we have chatted about how the year has been going, etc. There weren't any real large items that came about, so we have just some talk pieces, but we'd really appreciate it if the board has questions or would like to hear about a particular thing, please uh, put forth the question. Okay. How about we'll raise our hand? <laughs> we'll oh, that's so all. we're all here. Okay. Um, and, or if you guys want to pass the mic however you'd like to do it. Sydney. Just take it away, Sydney. Okay, um, well, I'm Sydney Riley, and I guess, first of all, I'm just going to kind of talk about the band choir trip that we took to New York. That was incredible. Like, my favorite part after the 24-hour bus ride, sitting watching snow fall, and we were going, like, so slow, it felt like getting there, and then we rode the subway to Times Square, walking up the stairs, and looking up at all the lights in the city was breathtaking. So different from Paintsville. And it, 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 it just, it was such a great experience to experience city life, I guess. And I was just glad that, like, we had the experience to be able to do that. Um, I'm Lexi Spiguin. I'll talk about our two college classes that are on the list, Advanced Bio and Honors. Um, so this year was the first year Advanced Bio was actually a college credit class. Um, I really enjoy it. Mr. Rasmussen does a great job at incorporating the new technology in the classrooms. We have laptops now that we use, which is really cool because we start going to the computer lab every day, which yeah, that's okay, but laptops are better. <laughs> Um, but it's really good. It um, really involves medical careers that you could be going into in the future. So I've learned a lot more about those careers and paths that I can take to go there. Um, honors English, another fun <coughs> class. Um, it's hard, but it's it's totally worth it. Miss Davy does a really good job at showing us how college is and the papers that we'll get, and she does a really good job incorporating it to the classroom. Do you want to maybe take the microphone out? Okay, um, I can talk about the German student visit because my family and I, we hosted two Germans and it, it was amazing. I absolutely loved having Germans and I definitely think that it's something that we should continue. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, having Germans. <laughs> Um, but it's definitely something I think that we should continue to do because I definitely made two lifelong friends that I will continue to keep in touch with and that they are forever a part of our family. My family right now is working on a Christmas gift to send over there. And it was just an awesome experience to um, 
to meet someone from the other side of the world and then have them stay in your home with you, which is really awkward at first. But then they just adapted so easily and it was so cool to just compare cultures, you know, just to have that little bit of experience. So I'd say definitely continue to do that because it really opened my eyes. Okay, I'm going to talk about the, veg the Veterans Day dinner. Um, okay, so on Veterans Day, we went to us as a Christmas advisor, we went to the Legion and we served all the veterans that went and ate there or whatever. So, like, my job was refilling all their coffee cups. That was a very, very hard job. Um, they drank a lot of coffee that time. <laughs> I was kind of amazed. Like, but they're just, I don't know, they're just, you know, they're drinking. And just like the conversations that I got to have with them, you know, and stuff. Like, I don't know, I guess some of the guys were just, they'd be like, oh, thank you. You know, they're just like so appreciated that um, we came and like we were like helping them, like, we carried some of their plates. And I just thought it was really cool to um, serve them in that way. Um, because of like what they did for our country and stuff and now we're giving back and as that generation and it's just cool while I was pouring all their coffee cups I got to talk to them like one-on-one -on -one a lot this one guy who's telling me how he single-handedly won the Vietnam War and I was just like you're crazy dude but it was just it was so cool just um, when I came back and I was talking to Mr. K about it I was like oh yeah I guess this guy told me whatever and he's just like, Tatum, I bet you made that guy's day. And I was like, oh yeah, like I did. It's so cool to um, thank him that way and stuff is cool. Um, I'm gonna talk about homecoming and how it was really fun. Um, the I thought that this year there was more, um, um, we were able to like <laughs> come together as a school and actually celebrate our school spirit and have fun at the game and everything. And the week we do like a whole kind of celebration thing, like we had dress up days and that kind of shows the school spirit and I thought it was fun. from a year ago and the food to now is it better just it's not as good as you want yeah. or I think it's so we have seen improvement it's yeah. it's yeah. so it's getting better with meeting with the lunch lady yeah. and having some more input well i was just going back to the veterans day thing i know towards the end i was i was just in charge of the cake for setting out place but i know at the end of you're taking apart like the table and taking like all the stuff off of it um, Tatum was grabbing all the coffee pots and stuff, and then there's a guy that was sitting at the front table. I think for about half an hour that I was cleaning up tables or so, I think she sat there for that long talking to him, because every time I'd walk by, I think they were still talking. Yeah, it's it was cool. He was awesome. Yeah, I think it was just really fun doing that, because you just got to see, like, how many people actually did it from, like, around our area, went out and fought war and helped our country. So I thought that was really cool. All right, I'll talk about um, one of the classes I'd like to see be offered next year and to continue to have would be the study hall. I think if you use it wisely, it would be a really good class to have instead of just drafting it. And yeah, that's what I got. I'm Ryan Books, and I'll go back to the veterans day thing. I was doing the dishes, and mostly the guys are doing that. And Guys, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I just got to know what it would be like to work in a restaurant, like back in the kitchen, like knowing what to do. When...
Um, I guess one of the classes that I would like to see us have is a more of a like a computer arts class, like animating. And, I don't know if some people are into those kind of uh, I don't know, yeah, arts and stuff. All right, well, I'm the only one in here that's in our law class, so. Yeah, um, well, we, right now, tomorrow we have Janelle Kendall, an <coughs> attorney, coming in. And she already visited us like, once before the election. And then tomorrow she's bringing, like, um, <coughs> a book from a clinic case. And say, that happened the same time a long time ago. And we're going to review that and go through all that. So that's going to be cool. And then next Monday, we are going to the Candy Ohio County Jail to do that, so that would be pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we talked about that, didn't you, today? Yeah. <laughs> not, yeah. not ending up on the other side of the glass. <laughs> I would also like to see the study halls being continued because maybe some people don't use them, but I do, and I know there's a lot of people that actually make good use of them. And without that, like, I'm pretty sure I'd be struggling. Like, some of us have sports, and we have to go to school, or not school, but um, work. And I work, like, five days a week and stuff. And yeah, it's just a lot. So I use those study halls. Well, considering I'm the only one in here with Lion Trans, I suppose I'll start it off with, do you guys have any, question, any questions of what we do in Lion Trans? Yeah, what do you yeah, tell us. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a, um, we usually just start out the year, we take a safety test, we take all the safety tests of all the tools that we have in the shop, and we take the tool test to make sure we know what we're doing, we, what we know what we're using, and then usually it just kind of goes by that Mr. Gunther will have someone bring in a car, we'll change the oil on their car, do whatever they want us to do, and we do it for free, so we help people. Or you can bring in your own project, like I've brought in a few of our family's cars, fixed up some stuff, brought them home. Or um, Tucker Wendroth actually bought, bit off a huge chunk of something. He's uh, re restoring a car, and we're all helping him out. Gunther's helping him learn how to do all this. So for people who want to go into auto mechanics and stuff like that, it's a great class, and it counts as part of a shop time if we would go into classes like this in college, Gun you can have Mr. Gunther sign off a thing and you have it's two hours less or two semesters less of a class that you'd have to take in college. And it's honestly probably one of my favorite classes of the day. It's fun to go out there and hang out with guys, work on cars and just be friendly with other people that I don't usually talk to during the day when I'm busy writing down notes and taking tests. But it's fun. Um, and Gunther keeps us quite on, in line. We, some people take the class just to get an easy grade, but he usually doesn't let that happen. He tries to keep everybody in order working and busy, so it's a good class that I hope I can take more of next year. Okay, I'm going to go back to the New York trip. Um, I thought overall it was a great experience to be see a big city and outside of small town Painesville. Um, but I thought it was overall like a great way to bond with not only your grade, but the other grades that went um, for choir and band. And I thought like the teachers and the chaperones you got to bond with too. So, yeah. Does the board have any questions? Does everyone have study hall? I don't. No. I don't. Hey, I, it's a choice. It's a choice if you choose to. Um, I have no study hall this semester, but I do next semester, so I have seven straight classes. So it's a really big challenge, especially with the sports seasons, because sometimes during the day you just need a break, or I'm just like hectic because I have so much going on in my life. So next semester I have it, I'm just really looking forward to a break, but I know I can get my homework done in those two, so I like study hall, I guess. It's really good. Does it get utilized by everybody, or is it? I would say it's mostly utilized. Um, kind of a percent. Could you put it into a percent from what you guys see? Eight or twenty. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'd say uh, I finished off a two page paper that I had to do today. You think that the study hall is something that when you're here from eight to three, that you need that time and the rest of what your day is, whether it be sports or something, dominate enough that without that time you would be short? Yeah. yeah. Is that what you're saying? I am sports. I'm usually from anywhere from 3.15 to 5 and then I go to either church or I have other stuff that I have oh, to work, do. Work. 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 Between all that stuff I get about Usually from about 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock for homework. And then they usually have to wake up really early to get here to go do other stuff. So I don't have a whole lot of time to do homework. And I take two college classes. So. Matthew, one thing that the board doesn't know a lot about yet, and you're part of it, I think, are you the only one? Yes. Um, can you mention the new student mentoring program a little bit? Okay. Um, Maybe take the microphone. This is through our immigration grant. We, I think there's about seven or eight of us that we come in at about 7, 7.30 and we tutor, um, depends on who it is, but we come in and we help mid anywhere from middle schoolers to our own classmates, our own peers. We help them, we tutor, um, and if all they need is a friend to help them get through their homework, we sit there, we talk them through it, we help them out. And if it's more complicated, like they don't understand, we'll do some for them, we'll help them all, we'll, work, we'll teach them. And we're actually employed by the school, yep, right? we and we just signed all our papers for that, so we are technically representing the school of Paintsville. And, um, I think it's something that we could get more people into, because I know there's plenty of kids up there who need help, middle schoolers, high schoolers, either way. But um, And I think it's just a thing where they come in saying that they need help, they have to come to Jackie, and then she sets them up with one of us who she, who she thinks could help them best. And I know the kid who I work with, he loves coming in. He, he comes in as much as he can, as much as I have time for at least. And um, I know it's not, it's not about me getting paid. That's just a bonus I use. I could do it without getting paid. But because um, it's just the fact that I get to help somebody every once in a while, get their homework done, show them that other people here care because I know that some people struggle with getting through middle school, getting bullied and stuff like that. And it's no fun. So I think my main job is to come in, help them with their homework if they need it. But I'm just here to be a, an elder person who's showing them that I care. I'm someone who wants to come in and hang out with them. But yeah, we do homework and all that other good stuff. And anything else? Do you think that all the kids know how to access that? I don't. I don't yeah. know. We have we put it out. No. And we we had it in the bulletin, but I think we just started the program, so now it's it needs to evolve bigger and be promoted more. We don't just kind of got our mentors on board. Wasn't there a peer tutor program? At the we high have board? we have a, a okay. There's so peer that mentoring. From this? Yeah. Oh, we have a peer mentoring, which happens during the school day, which is a class. That goes out to like the elementary or the middle mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. I thought. And then we have. Oh, okay. And then we have this class or this program. So we don't have that one. -on -one. <clears throat> we don't have peer one on one during the show. I was always. We did the stuff. No, the peer we, we do not have that. We're not talking about the group that goes over to the other school. No. Jackie does line up still peer mentors during the school day. That can be one on one or oh, yeah, going into a study hall. Yeah, peer tutors during the school day. This is before school and after school help. That's what but this these program guys is. Didn't, you guys didn't no, I didn't take my They didn't take my study was part of, actually. Yeah. So do you day. still have? Yes. A lot. I'm just curious to see the difference because I would see, see that there'd be more kids would want access to someone before or after school than during the school. 
And this is a program that we're just starting off with. So it was out in the bulletin, but that's all the promoting at this point we've done. But I think now that we're seeing it's being successful, that to get it out to teachers to identify students and for students to come in and ask. But I think as a staff, we're looking at identifying more students that need it and then connecting with parents. So, but we've had our great, our peer mentors that have been coming in and our peer mentors during the school, they all do a tremendous job. So when you get something like this, you have TLC also operating, where all of you are really kind of trying to watch after the people around you and everything else like that. So this system for them to get tutoring could come from the TLC group too, right? Yes, yeah. So if one of these students saw somebody that was too shy to talk to somebody about it, they could tell somebody that this is available. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. How many tutors do we have in this? Right now, we have five that are actively working. We have two others that are signed up that we haven't had students identified yet. So right now, we're working on getting it out and identifying students that need help. So you could potentially have yeah. a lot oh, yeah. of tutors. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we, we have funding through the immigration dollars for up to 10 mentor students. And a one mentor student can take on more than just one student. Right now, they're all one on one. Um, so, so we do have room for growth. And, and the integration plan is in place until 2017. So we have these dollars available every year for the next few years. So as the, the as this program grows, we'll have dollars to enable it to grow. That won't come out of our general fund budget. And Jackie Campbell is our advisory advisor for the program. Anything else that anybody would like to add? Can I say a few words? Um, it's very nice that you come. Um, I'm probably speaking for the rest of the board here. This is the most interesting when you guys uh, show up here to talk to us of any board meeting that we have. So a lot of our board meetings, we're talking about operations of the school and all other issues. But the whole goal of the school is you. And when you speak to us, we have at least an idea of what's going on. And I, I think I'm probably speaking for everybody that you can't imagine how important it is that you come. The other thing I do want to say is there's a couple of issues that you have asked about, one specifically. And I want you to know that even though sometimes we don't have an opportunity to come back to you on a specific issue, it's not that the board doesn't talk about it. It's not that it, it goes anywhere. For example, you many times, and I know that I've seen you a few times, we talk about the courtyard, and everybody wondering why we can't use the courtyard. Well, our superintendent has worked on that, and we have followed up, so you brought it to us, we do a follow-up and we find out we're up against the fire marshal issue and a safety issue. So um, it's very much appreciated when you do that. Um, I was going through some of my notes from last year. There was a deal in there on the beautification of the bathrooms tied with an art class. Did anything ever come of that? We, we have the pictures and we have the plexiglass and the plexiglass is actually going to be out an artistic way to see the two plexiglasses as a frame because we have a, a cleaning process that our custodians use because they wash down the walls so that they're still efficient and we can still put the artwork up. So Mrs. Whaler is working on that, but we have the plexiglass cut to put the drawings in that the kids made. Um, that were anti-bullying and accepting, and I think you guys saw several of them last year. So now we're just trying to figure out how the effectiveness of our cleaning staff to make their job similar and being able to put those up. So that was brought up last year, a good example. Um, you want to talk about it. So what you're bringing to us isn't just going to deaf ears. We, it's very good that you come and speak with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you would pass down your, um, what I do is I have some students that come and they, they ask to be on it. And then I ask for a teacher recommendation. And then also I ask current advisory students for their input on students.
students that would be good principal advisors that would be honest and recognize what's needed across the school. Um, and then from that, from the, those, right, I guess, nominations, then I look at it and I try to have a, a cross-section so that we have representatives from a lot of different groups, like some sports, you know, some kids that are in um, music, some kids that really enjoy science from different aspects of kind of the school community. And if somebody's asked to be on it, you have never turned them down because we love all the input that we get. So. All right, um, we have lots of new faces this time for our middle school principal advisory. And when we met this time, uh, because we were meeting with the kitchen staff and they had limited amount of time, uh, we had had a whole group meeting with the high schoolers as well, and then we kind of stayed and talked as a middle school. Uh, so since this is your, a lot of, many of you, your first time talking with the school board, I begin to get a sheet. I thought I'd pass them down. Oh, they left them up there. Can one of you, Sophie, can you grab those up there and pass them down your <coughs> way? Here are some talk comments that we talked about at our meeting. You can choose from that list or you can choose something else that you'd like to tell the board about if something's gone on this year in a class that you would like to share or a concern or something that you'd like to bring forward. Uh, we'd really like you to do that. So what, I, what I'll have you do is let's hand the microphone down to Sophie and she can start, introduce herself, and then maybe pick something to talk about from the beginning of the year to now. Okay, I'm Sophie Strand, and um, I think that technology uh, out in classrooms is a good idea if you have your iPhone or smartphone or whatever it is to be face down on your desk and you can't touch it, I think that's a good idea. because. I like when you can use it for classroom uses, like if they tell you to look up something, because I like doing that, having the ability to use it. But, but recognize that maybe you can't be texting while the teacher's talking? Yeah. And then just pass it down. Um, my name is Ryan Minister, <coughs> and I think that homecoming is good, how we have the pet fest, and how we all dress up. Uh, I'm Jason Heff, and uh, I think that the junior rate day is really good because I can help senior citizens who can't really break their house as easily. I'm Spence Evans, and I like art because it's more of an open activity and you get time to do what you have to do in your homework and stuff. Um, I'm Josh Kranz and I like the 7th and 8th grade parties because it gets people that don't really get to hang out together as much to hang out and just have fun and dance. Um, I'm Chase Mansell and talk about something that's been talked about because you may have something to add. So just because somebody talked about right day, maybe somebody has something that they would like to add on to. I'm Rick Johnson and um, in advisory we we had those ten minutes, you know, I don't I'm in Mr. Whalers and we check we bring our phones or whatever into the class and we look it up on our phone and show them so it doesn't individually have to do it on the computer. And then we talk about news, and it's kind of just a break within the day, 10 minutes. So, and we do look at the grades. So. I'm Lily Haynes, and I like art. I think art's good because the homework that you did on the drawing and drawing is pretty fun. I match the top. Um, I like advisory time because, yeah, it is a break, and um, I think it's a good time to check up on your grades because 
you don't really have time to do that like during the day and like you don't have to worry about it so much at home you can do in school. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm Kirsten Campbell, and the first round um, practice for the MTA test was um, good because I like how to try something different than what we had been doing in the other years. Oh, sorry. Well, like, they had, I don't know, it's just like... Was the program to be? Yeah, the program. Um, that was going to be I one. I'm from Coach Raven and I like EST because you have time to do your homework and stuff. I'm Luke Johnson and I, I'd rather, for the technology in classes, I'd rather have Chromebooks than uh, iPads and stuff like that because they're easier to use and you can access stuff better. Hey, can you tell me just a little more about that? The Chromebooks are like little laptop kind of things. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you find it easier to use. Is it just It's just faster? more, yeah, and iPads are confusing. They get messed up and stuff. Because mm -hmm. I've heard you talking in technology, and the technology people talk a lot more about the Chromebooks now mm -hmm. than we were about the iPads, so that's what's driving it? Uh, well, I think, you know, at first we had a kind of iPad because that's kind of what came out and now it's, it's become more of a teacher resource in our building and we've gotten a, we purchased a card of Chromebooks last year with the capital dollars and that has made it through the classrooms between that and the laptops that are now in the college course. Um, students have, that was their input when I met with them earlier this month was if they're going to get technology in the classroom the things that they would like is the chromebooks the more finish out that card of laptops because we only have 16 so if you have a class it's doubled up and to improve our current computer lab situation so that they're updated for more of a classroom type use and have enough computers in there so a whole class of uh, 28 to 30 students can be in there uh, so that has been some input that we have received now that we have the opportunity to use the Chromebooks and I'm hearing that from principals across our area at this 712 level because of papers and the projects that they do. The Chromebooks, laptops, more computer-like devices are definitely more user-friendly and um, versatile for the classroom use. And it certainly may be different between the secondary From needs different. and the yeah. elementary mm -hmm. needs. Yeah. But generally, all of you kind of on the same page on the Chromebooks? Mm -hmm. So easy to use, easily accessible, you can get what you need done on them? Mm -hmm. Very good. I'm Kate Spanier, and I was in the PLTW class, and I think it's really fun to like design stuff on the computer and stuff. I'm Janice Stanley, and the Chromebooks are like way easier because if you like type up like a paper or anything on the iPads, it's like very touchy. You know, on a Chromebook, you can like just type whatever you need, just like on the computer. Um, I'm Jess Anderson, and I think the community right there was fun, but it needs more efficiency because we got left behind twice in our advisory group. First, when they didn't give the announcement to the high school area, and the second, when they set up the buses wrong. So we were sitting there for a good half an hour, 45 minutes, and then it got behind on lunch and everything just got really backed up for us. Um, I like that that they have band because it, gives, like, because it gives a chance for kids to do something and to have something, like it gives them a good opportunity to open up to, I don't know, try something different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everybody having fun that's in band and choir? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Good. Music will last you for the rest of your lives. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, does the board have some questions for our middle school advisor? <coughs> I hear we like cookies. Is there any comments about lunches at this level? Um, 
too short for the lunch time. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'd like more open gym time? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It seems like some of the meals aren't filling enough. Yeah, they're yeah. not very much. How long do you guys have for lunch? Half hour. Half hour. Compared to last year, the, are the meals better or a little bit better. Just so you have a little idea that it's a concern of all of ours that you don't go home hungry. But there's a, an entity called the federal government that has some rulings over the top of this. So we are doing our best and all of the staff in the school and everybody are doing the best to fit within those parameters. So um, some of the reading I've done recently, um, they're aware of it. So you may see some of that change federally even so. So that will be helpful to everybody. And if you really want a project, if I would urge you to write a letter to the Secretary of Agriculture, because that's who's in charge of that whole program, and tell them what you think of your lunches. Because um, I don't know how much I like going home hungry every day. Yeah. So, and then I want to take a minute, just like I did with the group before. Um, I'm going to speak for the whole board, hopefully, and I didn't talk to them beforehand, but we really appreciate when you come and talk to us. What you say is really important. We have board meetings, most of them are at night, and we talk about a lot of things, and we have lots of reports that we hear. But this is the only time that we hear from students and all that's going on here, the only reason any of us are here is to help with um, what your education is as a student. And we thank you a lot for doing what you're doing on this council and um, telling us what's going on. You're very great. <laughs> to talk to a group like us sitting up here. But the thing is, if, you're, if somebody's not willing to tell us how you guys feel, we don't know. And so we need to know that. So no, I would like to thank each and every one of you for having the guts to do it, because there's a lot, of, a lot of kids your age that just can't talk to adults. Good for all of you. So we look friendly here, don't you think? <laughs> Do we look like a friendly group? Yeah, I can. Yeah. And I'd like to, uh, um, I appreciate you guys' input and welcome to all our new members. Okay, uh, what I'd like you to do now is if you can cast your um, name tags this way and put your sheets at one of the ends down there. I thank you very much. And you can return to, so you're going to have probably hit right between 7th and 8th hours. So why don't you head down towards the middle school and just see where you fall. Okay, because the bell's going to ring in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're kind of next on the list. We're jumping around, but again, this is the most important to listen to the kids. Right. 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 And usually this meeting and one at the end, I go, the, the students do most of my report. Uh, I would like to say we have started the OPA testing in both the math and the English. And as you heard, the math program, the kids are seeing a little bit different, but they, they like it better. So hopefully the changes that they've seen will help their performance. Um, I do know the seventh grade, there was a lot of information there that they haven't had yet on slope and some things, but they're all things that Mr. Spanier expected, so what they'll be seeing again. Um, so we'll look at that data. Uh, the other thing is the Admin Fellow Group out of Hutchinson and Painesville nominated Jacob uh, Dahl as a student that they are going to fund to go see the United Nations program for 14 days. They're fully funding him. He gets to uh, participate in a lot of the different lobbying and they get to behind the scenes and then uh, there's students from all over the world that will be attending along with him. So that uh, program and association is going to be sending one of our Painesville students. And this is the first time in, I think they mentioned like over 14 years, 
one of our students were nominated. So uh, that was a great honor for, for Jacob. And with that, any questions that you might have for myself? We do have a question. I always yes. have a question of some sort. When we were listening to the kids um, talking, our students talking, we were last discussion was on the Chromebooks. But when the, the older kids had their project lead the way, they commented how nice it was to have laptops. Yes. Um, okay. So I guess my only thought is I think when we go to a technology committee, my country on that, mm -hmm. that maybe they're I would hope we're not holding Chromebooks all the way through high school if well, they're finding 11th grade that I, a laptop is helpful. Yep, I think we're, you're going to see a variety when we look at this building. We're looking at four, four to five carts in this building. I think we'll see a variety depending on what the department area is and the age level. Uh, the Chromebooks we could not use for the Project Lead the Way courses because they do not have a big enough processor to deal with some of the um, programs and things that they're connecting to. Her interesting comment to me was that she had access with trying, without trying to get to um, a computer lab. Yes. So and it was kind of related to what was going on, but it, my indication was that we really need to be looking hard at that with these grants that we have to make sure we fill whatever need is there. Right. And then the other piece is uh, some of the social studies teachers have also indicated they would really like to see um, something like a, a nook for their class that would have just their textbook, just their the different books that they read um, for their class, and that would be like a class set in their classroom um, instead of continuing to purchase books, et cetera, and uh, to have it all in one thing where they wouldn't have the resource of the internet available to you to them. So looking at what the students want, um, what the students will utilize, and also what the department or our teachers would see as facilitating their program the best, I think what we will end up in this building is seeing a variety of different types of <coughs> carts and looking at putting them in a kind of a priority as far as how we'll bring them in. So I think as I continue to talk with teachers and students and our technology committee is at all of that as far as our overall plan. So but that's been a big discussion the last two months over here in this building. So and certainly one-to-one -one initiatives, that's part of the benefit for it is because in wood electronic media versus buying textbooks, it, um, I think, at least to my opinion, and yet we'll have discussions with us at the technology, we're not there yet, we have a lot of training to do with staff, but there is pieces that we can do now. We could have classrooms have a set of it, have electronic pieces, maybe still have paper copies of something so that if kids don't have an electronic piece of equipment they can use at home, then they still have the ability to have the paperwork. So I think as this unfolds, we want to do it right. And certainly that would mean looking at all various types of technologies and keep in mind the things that we think are really the best right now change very quickly in that field. And, and I think that's where some buildings were talking to some of the different people that we've talked with as far as even the camera security. Will Bala, students, please come to the office. Andrew West, Thomas Coakley, Hannah Lay, Hunter Boss, Sage Stevens, Tanner Schaefer, Emma Stevens, Mackenzie Haynes, and Nicole Hislop. Also, Stephanie Beerman and Grace Huffer and Kayla Schaefer, please report to the A group. Thank you. Some of the buildings that have done the one-to-one -one and just one straight piece of technology for everybody uh, at this point are looking back wondering if that was the right thing to do. The example, the very discussion we've had right now where everybody got an iPad. Mm -hmm. Well, I think part of what they're finding out now is that that necessarily may not meet the needs of the older kids, for instance, on what they really need to have for technology use. So we want to be very careful with this as we unfold this and we want to use the dollars that we've graciously gotten from the community to make sure that we do it in an appropriate manner. And I think that deals with our technology committees both at the at both schools plus our district technology committee to really plan and make sure we do it appropriately. A few years ago an instructor told me what one of the textbook costs and I thought he was talking over a hundred dollars for a textbook. Uh, yep. And so when we start combining technology for everybody at home, 
that is looking at this new world. It's a cost-effective method of getting our kids the information. Well, it is and it isn't because you still have to have that copyright, even if it's electronically. So yeah. they're finding out it's it's not it's maybe not as yeah. it is not as expensive, but it's it is, it's a still. Um, it's although there are some consortiums now that are making their own right curriculum. So, so, so they won't even go through the major textbook companies. You right. look at our Project Lead the Way program, you know, we need to um, provide the technology, the laptops, and, and they're usually fairly high, it's a high powered processor to run their program, but we don't provide books for that program. That mm -hmm. is totally an online program. So although we're putting the money into the laptops, which will, you know, hopefully last seven plus years, um, but we are not putting money to the textbooks, because mm -hmm. part of the license, which is, the college one was $3,000 a year, um, that is the sole cost of the textbook for that course on a yearly basis. So, um, you know, so you really got to look at it and look at your long-term plan, technology plan, curriculum plan, um, what do you want to get out of this piece of electronics? So, so it's a good discussion. Well, so it was far, really fun because it came so up with both groups of students and talking and about technology. Yeah. So I think as a, a board and getting behind this issue, I think it's a, a very good thing. Okay. Any other questions? Or I'm going to go relieve Dawn. And also she can present on the world's best workforce. Thank okay. you. While she does that, Matt. Um, okay. I'll we'll go from up here quick. Um, okay. Winter's going well so far. We've got quite a bit of activity like we usually do in our... Uh, fitness center. I'll be launching a new workout for brand new members um, here in the next week or two. Uh, I posted a new BNC TV episode today, so I'll send you an email on that. Uh, Pause has been going really well, and we're actually beginning to plan for the summer all-day camp already for that. So, any questions for me? Okay, thank, thank you. Our activities director. Uh, just recently completed our uh, fall schedules for next year and kind of feel like I'm learning all over again because we lost a lot of our uh, previous non-conference opponents with the new conference but um, we're able to secure a pretty um, good schedule I think and maybe evolve as time goes on and we're able to work things out. Uh, but i um, very pleased with that. Uh, currently working on next winter schedule, same thing. Uh, found that uh, almost all of our non-conference wrestling opponents are in conference, which I guess would make sense as to why we were interested in that conference, right? But we're, um, uh, so we're just gonna work through that. Um, something you should be aware of at the Minnesota State High School League, um, the transgender policy that they had proposed did pass. Um, basically, um, the steps that uh, would take and how it would impact our school um, if a student that believes that they have a consistent gender identity different than the gender that they're assigned at birth would have to give a written notice to our school. We wouldn't make any determination on that, send it on to the state high school league. Um, they have officials that would deal with that as well as um, the final decision being an independent hearing officer and then the state high school league board of directors would have authority to approve or not um, the findings there. Um, directly impacting our school basically um, in as far as activities go it would be the exact same management as if we had to manage it in any other um, situation if a uh, um, student um, was in, in our school in Fayette how would you handle that so great one for maybe you guys have to figure out something but um, uh, it, you know at least we have a policy and as far as the activities go for participation it's all um, uh, because of the question number one passing, we're um, working on uh, securing a, um, uh, a track resurfacing project to be done so we can get that done this summer. Um, there's quite a number of cracks that are on there. Um, also, be aware of our conference. Um, I'm waiting, actually. I thought maybe today I would hear back, but sometime this week I think I'll hear back as far as um, the possibility for our gymnastics. Um, to join the rest of the schools that are in the, um, central Minnesota that have gymnastics are um, uh, paired with the Granite Ridge uh, Conference looks like it would be a great fit for us. So I should find out about that. Um, and then dance team will find out in February. The um, thing about the dance team is that compared to the other ones, they have one meet. So it's a really 
a lot easier and simple to join a conference because you're not getting a schedule um, of a, a whole bunch of events that other schools then need to include you and it counts against the number of contests and dates they can have, whereas gymnastics, we kind of need to have that answer. Um, now, because we're working on those schedules, if we tried to join a conference in the spring for gymnastics, we would never, um, unless we were currently already scheduled with those schools, it would be virtually impossible to do. Um, uh, we have a triple A banquet coming up in January, and otherwise it's just two, three, and four nights a week at school. Tonight we have gymnastics, hockey, and girls basketball, and dance teams performing at girls basketball going on here. So, any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you can just um, we draw a map for Donnie. come on down. The building and ground supervisor. Well, I've been working with a few companies trying to get uh, some specs drawn up for a HVAC system. Um, not getting too far with that yet. Uh, I've also working, started to work on roof specs. Um, we have one company out there that's interested in looking for I mean, there's a lot of snow on the roof, it's kind of hard to tell where our problems are right now. So I'm not sure how far we'll get with that. I have a three-year asbestos inspection coming up here in December, and we hope to find all the rooms that we are going to put tile in. A lot of the rooms, I shouldn't say a lot, there's few rooms with carpet over old tile, and I'm sure it's asbestos tile on there, so we're going to have that checked out to see which rooms were. That'll all be in your management report. We found out that one room wasn't. But, but that so. should be there 90% of the time, the tile, the adhesive on the tile, that's the stuff. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah, we kind of got caught with one or something that was. Yeah, so. yeah. And we just want to make sure that we're accurate on this. Right, yeah. And he'll be going through that. Well, over the Christmas break. Um, and I'm also working with two companies on cost of uh, tile and carpeting. We are going to carpet a couple areas. I imagine one would be the elementary school library. Yeah, typically the areas that will remain carpeting that we'll look at are the media centers. And then we have a request for a, a choir room in the elementary that we keep carpet in there. They have the kids laying on the floor or sitting on the floor a lot, movement, and it's also a matter of just kind of sound piece, not bouncing all over the place. And the last thing we uh, did get a quote on putting another set of doors in by the elementary school office for security reasons, that they'd have to come in, go into the office, check in, and then come out. It, it'll be a discussion after five-year plan for capital. You know, there, we don't have, didn't have that amount put into the project, but it might be something when we start looking at security and buildings that we might want to do it, and we will have some additional capital dollars freed up because we were, we were able to get question one. Other than that, snow has been found. I got a question. Uh, who does a three-year? Uh, it used to be Terracon, but oh, yeah. it turned, it changed companies. I want to say something like I, I see you, but I, I'd have to look at that. And then uh, you're still required for six months? Yes. Yeah, Every six months we go together. Yeah, I got a lot of well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, man. Okay. Um, I think maybe the staff will have to get the PowerPoint up here. She wants to okay. Yeah.
we don't recognize that. Uh, and there was a survey sent out. What happened was there's a, through resources we send people to, the teacher, two teachers, two pairs, and we missed the support staff one. We, the district, the district vice of development. So they wanted to do something for it. And they want to do that in-house instead of just to recognize outstanding uh, workers in the school district. And they uh, do a lot of stuff on surveys now. The email survey, what's that called? Survey monkey. Survey monkey, which is amazing because you don't have to wait for six weeks or someone tabulated. It's like instantly. Um, new business, they talk about the in-service for March 24th. Dave Stens, who is going to see about getting him for uh, two to three hour mental health presentation, which is free. And, and we're going to be able to get him in. We're, we're going to move the days now, explain that. Okay. The snow makeup day, so I'll get, when I get my report. Remember, this was December 4th. So yeah. There's been stuff there's, going there on been since There have been some changes since then as far as snow makeup days. But the mental health piece also isn't that part of their continuing ed Correct. for their licensure. Yep. And then um, the tall cop thing is still going. Um, I think we can kind of talk a little bit about that during my report also. But it's a staff development where um, police are going to come in and it's a, a drug um, education piece. Uh, we're looking at, I think, March 24th. The trouble is we don't know what kind of snow days we will have. We're going to try to keep that free. And, and what has happened is that Lori was able to work with them. And we're going to have it available to us. We're going to do it here. So if we don't have a snow day that day, then we'll be able to incorporate that program. We're also trying to set something up in the evening for possibly parent education on this. This this whole project, this whole process was like Painesville would be the hub, and there would be um, so that other schools could come here to do to see this presentation. And it's supposed to be a, an entire community thing. It's not just educating the school; it's, it's educating the community at large, not just our community. Sort of linked to other schools would be other communities fact, we'll also. Probably want to send it where we do this. We probably want to send it from some things out to our community because we could have 20 to 30 police cars yeah. in our parking lot at that time. So we might want to inform the community about that. No, there's a reason that they're there. And um, we got a quick, well, I got a quick look at They had already, uh, um, Colin, there's a gentleman, Colin. Wolf, who built us a, a web page, a district wide. Well, when I went to the district wide web page and to pull up my for my meetings, it now says there's a little pupil sign there that says we've outgrown our website. Well, he kind of showed the start of it at this meeting, and now it's even bigger than it was then. Um, he's developed it so that it's more user friendly for the teachers. Not only does it have district staff information on there, it's got tabs for Continuing ed, community ed, technology, technology and and so, that, so we can start putting things on the website for that also. So that they have one, one click mm -hmm. access to all kinds of stuff. And I think that's all I have to say. It was in, yeah. Okay, thank you. Now we're going to. Go up to number five of uh, business for the world's best workforce presentation. It almost seems so. Do we? Do you want us to move around? Yeah. It's like every time I come to. The <laughs> you want to the gun or yeah. want to take this? I'm hoping about ten minutes. Depends <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on how many questions. Uh, the presentation ten minutes, and then depends on how many it's questions. It's okay. We've got some things on the agenda. Yeah. I want to make sure we accomplish well. Yeah. All the board members are here, and sure. some have a about a three o'clock deadline, or five two. We know that I can talk fast, Mark. Okay. Well, why don't? We? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we have been Would tasked with doing sure. the world's best workforce and integration plan, and I'm just going to give you an That's overview of it. One of the things that we have been working on is coming up with the plan that you've seen some of. Bob has presented it at the school board. And we have to get a report that goes into the state. And they've kind of set a really vague deadline. So I'm going to give you an overview of where we're at. You do have a handout that's there that is going to show you some of the information that we have accumulated to do this. First of all, 
It's based on legislation that came about, state statute 20, uh, 120B.11 says that every school in the state needs to come up with a plan that says we are not only dealing with the academic needs of our individuals for the school board requirements for graduation, but the goal is that we have kids that are ready to go to college or, and or ready to go into the workforce. And every school in the state of Minnesota is required to do this. And it's leaving it once again from MDA, MDE up to the schools to come up with how they're going to present it. You know, if they give us that wonderful blueprint, we'd be pretty good. This presentation, Bob has a copy of it. He'll probably send it out to we, all of you. We, I can send it out to all of you, and we'll also be posting it to the website. Um, so it talks about it, and it is addressing pre-kindergarten all the way through grade 12. When we look at it, here's the areas of emphasis. The state says there are five things that we have to make sure that we're doing as checkpoints. All children ready for school, that would be our kindergarten readiness. All third graders can read at grade level. All racial and economic achievement gaps between students are closed. All students are ready for career in college, and all students graduate from high school. The word all has gotten the government in trouble before. And as we are doing this, one of the things that we need to look at is all doesn't necessarily mean 100%. The big thing that the state says is we have to close our gaps. So we have to figure out our starting point and then how we're going to close each of those and move towards that 100%. Not necessarily that we're going to get there because we know that there are going to be individual needs and individual characteristics of students that make that 100% very, very difficult. And it's kind of that ideal that the government puts up. When we look at it, um, we have our system that we identified as a committee for what we were going to take into consideration to figure out what we're going to do. Achievement gap reduction, that's what we do with the MCAs and looking at those subgroups. Special ed and free and reduced lunch are our typical groups that we look at. Kindergarten readiness, we have a kindergarten roundup checklist, but we're, we're a little bit sketchy as far as deciding how we determine if, if our kids are ready for kindergarten. That's something we're going to focus on. Our literacy level for the third graders, we have read well by third grade um, plan that's in place, and we're gonna do some benchmarking with the MCA, benchmarking with our star reading and the MCA reports. Students in career and college readiness, looking at the senior exit survey, their financial aid, also making it a progressive program that comes in and looking at the explore the plan, aptitude tests, our career readiness, our careers class, all of those different measurements, looking at the multiple measurement report, which I talked about before for a graduation rate, and the state figures it out on a four-year average, and then our explore and plan tests that are coming in. We've talked about creating vision cards. That's what you have in front of you. That's our 2013-14 school year information and identification. The colored areas are where we're at. If we were had any in, in level one, it would be red. We don't have any red flags, which is a really good thing. Yellow is kind of caution. Orange is we're working on it. Green, we're progressing through at a rate where we should be. Blue would be the vision on uh, what we want to do. We're going to make sure that we collect this information annually and update that. And it's an accountability check to make sure we're doing the things that we're supposed to. Um, we look at it, and these were some of the goals that we are putting into our plan that we need to consider based on the 2013-14 information. Our reading proficiency at all grade levels, we need to look at it. They changed the test on us, and it is more stringent. So we have to up the ante on that a little bit. Reduce, reduce the achievement gap. Our two big populations are going to be with our special ed population versus our non-special ed population. We do not have as big a gap as many other schools but it's still bigger than we'd like it to be. Our free and reduced lunch population versus our free and reduced, non-free and reduced lunch population, our reading scores are very close there. So we've done something there, but our math scores, we have too big of a gap. We need to, as I said earlier, we need to figure out how we can have data measured to make sure we've got kindergarten readiness rather than it just being an age thing. And we have some of those things in place, but we don't necessarily record them and then a review of their readiness throughout high school um, 
starting in grade, grade nine and working on up, that they have a high school plan to go. These are the things that we already had in place that we just needed to pull together. Lots of them that you may have been involved in on committees and coming up with them are Title I plan, Elementary Literacy plan, the SIP plan, Curriculum Review Cycle. I'm not gonna read the whole thing to you. The one that we're working on, um, coming in new, Teacher Evaluation Program, Integration Plan is new, Principal Evaluation Program is, is new based on other legislation that we have. Um, the Integration Plan, yeah, this is the first year that we've had it. And we'll uh, let Bob take care of yeah. this portion. This is the first year that we've had it, so it's hard for us to get any kind of feedback at this point because our plan hasn't completed and we're just putting it in place. Uh, so first year we've had it, it's really to increase student achievement and close the achievement gap between student groups again. And for us, it can be certainly be special ed, but it's also our free and reduced population in comparison to our non special ed and on free and reduced population. And again, we need to start analyzing the data that we get in 2014-15, test scores to help us determine the impact of the program and making the adjustments that we may need to make. Um, just an update um, on what we've done, the integration plan at the secondary. Uh, Lori's already talked a little bit about that. We've just got about five student mentors that may have increased since um, the data that I got. They meet two to three times a week, either before or after school. Uh, they're serving about 10 students right now, and certainly we want to increase that. The program has just started. We're getting it, um, feet on its ground, and we hope to have many more by the time this is all done. As I mentioned, we have three years to really continue to work on this program, and then we'll most likely reapply for the integration funding again. Uh, we have a coordinator in, pla coordinator in place for that program. Um, we're identifying students that are in need of extra assistance, and we're going to hope to continue to expand that as needed. Okay, so that's where we're at with high school. Uh, Lake Wobegon Collaborative Elementary School Theater Camp. camp. This was really a unique piece. Um, I hope to have Jennifer Wurst come out. She's the one that really has put an immense amount of time in this program uh, to put it in place. And I'd like to have her come to the board and just give you a much more thorough explanation on everything that took place. But it was a partnership with Melrose um, Area Schools because they're the isolated district that we needed to be next to in order to be able to get the funds. That's why we've never been able to do it. The isolated district used to be uh, Long Prairie Gray Eagle, I believe. So we weren't an adjacent to that, so we could never access integration funds. We're able to do that now. That's why these programs can be put in place. So for students who potentially have not reached um, their, uh, their full potential because of economic, economic disadvantages, learning difficulties, social stressors, those types of things. Those are the students that we um, focused on for this program. I had six students from Elmo's, 28 from Painesville. Good start to this program. We plan to put it in place again next year. It's designed with Minnesota standards for literacy, math, and art mind. It was really a theater camp that integrated all of those things into the program. I believe it was just an outstanding program for our students. I think we'll start to get more students from other districts because of the way the program went this year. Uh, increased student behavioral skills also. There's a lot of things they do that work on the behavioral uh, skills of students during this program. They worked with Great Children's Theater and Chan Hansen Dinner Theater uh, to provide students with a theater experience that also increased student achievement, literacy, and math and in art. Um, and they went to a live performance at the end of the program, also in Chan Hansen. Um, it was really, well, they had a, they went to a live performance in Chan Hansen but they also did a live performance here in the district, and I've got a couple pictures that will we'll just show that. Uh, one is certainly they worked on more than just the theater aspect of it, but as you can see, the right uh, picture certainly so shows that they also have their own theater piece with this, and then when Jennifer comes in, I'm sure she'll add much more on this particular project, but I, I, turned, I, I thought it was just a fascinating project, the way that they incorporated math, literacy, and art into theater. I thought it was just outstanding. Their performance was through the Palupas. <laughs> so it was Charlie and Chocolate Factory. It was phenomenal. I you know spent the 45 minutes and went to it and it was it was great. Um, I think and was Ben it? was Charlie. Yeah. So and I was so happy we got it in the last. Yes, it was it was very good. The last thing that we have here are just the actual links to the, the sheets that you had. Um, and these are going to be in 
um, it'll take a moment to come up with. This is the information that we will be including in in the um, report. Whatever. And I printed them because I figured that this might happen. Um, it shows us what we're looking at as far as measurements. At the elementary level, as I said, if we were in level one and we had any of them here, they would be filled with red. Red would be, we need to address this immediately and take care of it. If you look at all three grade levels, middle, elementary, middle school, and high school, we don't have any red flags, which is a very good thing for us. Level two, we have to find and focus on it. That's where we need to do some fine tuning. We do have some yellow, not in the elementary school, but in the later ones when we look at the middle school and high school. And one of the big things that comes up with that is the rigor increases with all the testing and all of the measurements that we have. So ensuring that our students are getting the academics for it and being able to apply it. In the um, next column, that it says progress needed. We're about where we should be, but we can't be satisfied. And that's going to be the orange color. Green, that's good to go. But once again, just like when we were in ward school, we can't say we stop and we're happy to be there. We want to progress so that that all term becomes something that we're going to be able to be very, very proud of. We figured out the progression for these across the board by using a chart that comes from the Minnesota Department of Education. It's called the Attainable Goal Sheet. Some person that has much more statistical information than I do, and she's been there for 30 years but retired in October, came up with the sheet that is very specific. You plug in numbers as far as where you are and what you should expect to gain. Um, that one is the um, elementary one. You have the middle school and the high school one. I don't know that I'm going to pull them up. If you have any questions about them, right now, I'd be willing to answer them. If you have any that as you're looking at it later, um, anybody on the committee, which would be Bob, myself, and the, the other principals, plus some business people and some parents, probably the four of us, Bob and, and the principals and myself, better to look at the charts and give you an explanation of what's involved with them. But it gives you that information. Also, I think that Bob is planning on sending you the link to our um, report that's going to the state. And one of the big things that's nice in that is they're not making us do a paper copy so we didn't have to kill a bunch of trees. And we're able to just put some links into that one. And um, that one's available. We've got a couple of little tweaks yet to finish on it. But I think that we're planning on having it done by the end of the week. Yeah. And that's what I have for you. Any questions for us now? Then um, we have a couple of members that need to get away pretty fast. So if maybe if all of us could go down and remain standing. And Bob, I'm going to turn it over to you for a moment. If you could follow what you're going to do with the uh, well, report. Do my report real quick and then get off. Yeah, we're doing a report last in case these happen later. So you want me to do my report yeah. later? Later. Later, okay. After we're done, the rest of us will take the report. All right. My report isn't very long, but at the same time, I, I do have something on here that I think is important. Um, I want to take this time to thank board members, Deb and David. Um, Deb's been around for 21 years on the school board. David's been around for 10 years. So that's the amount of service that they provided to the public. Uh, being a school board member can be complex, challenging, and a thankless job at times. Uh, after all, you can't seem to make everybody happy all of the time. Uh, but being a board member is an extremely important position. You do the most important work of our community, which is that of educating our youth. Um, we have a couple plaques that we put together for the board members that are exiting. I'll just read them. Just school board members are the dedicated few who represent our community's values and thinking about public education in our community. The bottom line for these individuals is keeping alive the dream of public education for every child and making sure students achieve and succeed. We'd like to thank you for your commitment to high standards of achievement, support of district employees, and responsible leadership for the school district. 
On behalf of our students, parents, staff, committee members, and other board members, we very much want to thank you for your years of public service to District 741 and wish you the very best. Thank you. During a business day, just so for the public at home. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, sir. Okay, just a couple things. Donnie talked a little bit about the building project. Uh, snow makeup day is just be aware students will not have school on January 2nd. It was a snow makeup day, not the best day. I put it in there just in case we were going to get tons of snow makeup that we had to do at that time. But we did talk with staff, and although it was by a very, very slight margin, um, we are going to have a staff development day on January 2nd because we're going to move the snow day to January 20th, which was a school in-service day okay, for staff. We're going to move the in-service day to January 2nd versus the end of the school year because partly because the staff voted on that, partly because that's the best place to have it because they can use the information in staff development then for the remainder of the year. And then I will truly hope that I don't have to make any more calls out to the public concerning snow days. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where we're at right now at this particular point and then we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, reports to the board, just a uh, reminder to send out a quick email asking you to stop into the business office. There's a few reports there we want you to look at. At the next agenda, I'm going to our next board meeting, I'm going to, on the agenda, I'm going to have reports. It, I just want you to look at it so we can probably discuss them a little bit more uh, solidly on what we want to have in the packet, what we don't want to have in the packet for board members. So just stop it, take a look, and then it'll be agenda item. Next meeting, enrollments stay pretty consistent. We're up right now two in ECSE. We're up one in K through six, but we're down two in seven through 12. So we've been pretty stable for, for the main year, although I must say there's been ins and outs for that. Uh, a couple other things, calendar. On uh, Wednesday I meet with the staff just for our first um, input for the calendar meetings after school tomorrow. It's really just the start of it for the 15-16 school year. It, it, remember that 15-16 school year is a little different and that Labor Day is real late. It is on September 7th. All right. So I am going to talk with some community members in, in it doesn't look like right now that the state will come forward with a motion to allow us to start before Labor Day. Um, it just doesn't look like it's going to happen. But they do have a procedure that I'm just starting to track down that would allow us to do it anyway. I think we need to be aware of our, our um, people who are in businesses that are affected by starting school too early. But at the same time, I certainly would like to start be, at least in the start of September. If we could do that, we could get four days in before Labor Day and start, we can even give students you know, more time off if we want to do that and just get two or three days in. Um, I'll get some input from the staff. I'm going to want to get input from the community as we go down that, right, that road. So we'll probably have a couple meetings for community members to come in and talk to us about it before we do that. Um, if it seems like a fair thing to the community and our, our resort owners and people that are affected by the start of school early then I'm certainly going to come back to the board and say this is really what I'd like to do because it does free up our calendars tremendously to be able to get a few days in before. Otherwise, we're going into June, it starts getting hot at that time, not always the best time, although it can be hot at the start of September too, but that's at least my intent right now. I will have a couple calendars put together. One is if we don't start before Labor Day and one is if we do start before Labor Day. So just be aware of that. I have a couple committees to set up that I will, financial committee and also five-year um, capital plan committee. I'll be getting those going right after the start of the, the new year. All right, other than that, that's what I have. Questions for me? And a question for the board chair. Since this is my last meeting, and we did do the delegate assembly, can I like three minutes to just uh, Go ahead. I didn't, I knew it wouldn't be on the agenda, but we did the uh, Minnesota, Delegate Assembly was December 7th. And we did meet, and I brought you um, the book. There was a very interesting meeting the first day before we actually had the assembly and vote on it. And I brought the thing, so I have to remember the gal's name. 
and she uh, did a, her whole uh, presentation was on does school board leadership matter. Um, there's, I'm going to leave this with Todd, or Todd, with Bruce. <laughs> Bruce. Yeah. Um, actually, probably at the, at the district office would be better. There's uh, connection websites and stuff to get the information, but it was on um, a lot of money has been spent on figuring out what makes better school boards, what information areas they should have, or um, even things like, which I would have argued with, as to whether, we've had those discussions about whether to have um, elections on the same as the general meetings or not, or general elections or not. A lot of really good information in there though. And um, the other thing that, I'm with, that I've already given to Bob is the uh, tool belt of information where we need to get all communities involved more in public education before it gets landed. There's a news release for our press guy there, who's not even listening. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also have a new uh, directory for um, all of Minnesota's, so that you have connection as to who you want when you want to call and shoot out a legislator. Here's where you do it at. There was a couple of um, resolutions that I had starred that were more concerned to our community that I wanted. Um, the one that meant the most to me, because we we're also part of the C organization, which was developed, which was helped develop this one, is the to increase the equalization for districts receiving less than the state average. And that one passed really well. Um, there was also the one discussing the, the whether or not the um, they were going to lobby to do the three-day school break preceding Labor Day, and that one failed. And um, the teacher evaluations and ongoing funding for it, it, another thing. These are just things that they, that we as members of this organization want these lobbyists, because that's basically what Min Minnesota School Board Association is. One of their main, main jobs is to lobby for what we want as school boards. And the thing that they're going to lobby for, and I think it's either one or two, because it's on the press release, um, is for funding to go with these teacher evaluations you know, to, for the process itself. Because they keep giving us all these things that we need to do and we need to, to improve ourselves and improve training, but they don't ever tag any money along with it which leads me to the last thing that I want to tell you about, and that was the land trans, or land trust monies. Um, I came back, well, we all heard about it at the, the school board convention they had, yeah, I'll speak on it one time, but um, Minnesota as a state, when it became a state, one of the regulations was, or in order to be a state, you had to prove that you could provide for anything that you had in your constitution. The only thing that we had was, transportation and education. So there's millions of acres of land that belongs to the schools because you had to validate, you had to prove that you had enough of a way to make enough money to whatever the schools needed to support the schools. I've yet to find out when or why it ever got switched over to the DNR. Vince, do anyone who's in the DNR, but they're not working in our best benefit. States around us are still supporting their schools strictly on the land money. Our governor chose to ignore it. It was two years ago that it first came up and it was, this is already in law, so we need to re, this, there's no place in law where it was taken out, so we need to put it back in. There was a head person that was supposed to be in charge of a group of people that represented each of the areas. Um, that was done. Then he didn't do it. Nothing happened. The next year, it was hired this person. Well, there, I guess the first year was because the, the law is there, but there was no money allocated to it. No money switched hands. They were going to take it away from the DNA, whatever. Well, then they said, you have to hire this guy. And they allocated the money for it, but yet he still hasn't hired anyone yet or appointed it because that's how it all gets started. This person has to be appointed and then he can get the other people. So 
that went to the vote, and that one went really well too. That was passed. I wrote it down I, because as many years as I've been going down to the just delegate assembly, I've never once seen a totally unanimous vote. Even for, I think if you voted for free air, somebody would vote no. There's always, always one, and that one, I wish I could ask you. But it was almost, it was the closest to 100% I'd ever seen. 97 to three. So, <laughs> yeah. So, and that, but this is just the book. It, all, it has all the resolutions that we voted on. I wrote the um, outcomes on them. I will leave it with Mr. Hewitt so you can have it. See how it is? And I will pass it on to whoever the committee member will be for that. Um, it's not actually a committee member. You have to be elected elected uh, to this so position. You have to ask for Back it. in the day, Maury Dozdahl conned me into going, and I have his permission to say this. Conned me into going to a meeting with him about this. He was the delegate assembly person from here. Um, and then I think he just felt that he was getting up there and that they needed someone younger. Ha ha, I was the younger one then. So, so we would have a discussion with the board about somebody applying to be uh, another member. I would really like it because otherwise there are, there, Painful has had representation in, in District 21 what are touristic for as far back as anyone can remember and I'd hate to see them lose that because it's important. Can we talk about that next time when yep. we're talking about committees? Oh, and yes. Yep. Be sure. It would be very appropriate. Yep. Thank you very much. Well, I almost gave a press release. The important thing is that some of the stuff that's passed is to try and take the pressure off the local, local taxpayers. And it's interesting to go to that because the Congress, and you hear there's, I mean, it's literally schools from all over the state. And so you can tell, um, I think we have a lot of issues and the schools and the cities think they have a lot of issues. And that's the one time where everybody sits around, or we don't sit around, it's a huge room. You have to stand up and say who you are, be recognized to talk. You can't just shout stuff out. So it's very orderly, but conversations get, it's not just like the city schools are all voting against the, public, the rural schools or the rural, because there's ongoing conversation of why you feel the way you do or why it's happening. And I think a lot of, um, a lot of things get taken okay. care of there. Anything else on the board? Not, we have a motion to adjourn. Oh, motion by Lou, seconded by Deb to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs>